Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring, Jesus is coming again. Cheer up your pilgrims, be joyful and sing, Jesus is coming again. This is the voice of prophecy, a voice crying in the wilderness of these modern days. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Coming again, coming again, Jesus is coming again. From our Voice of Prophecy studios in Los Angeles, California, we welcome you to this half hour of inspiration and music, transcribed with the King's Heralds, Del Delker, Rad Braley, and HMS Richards, the Voice of Prophecy speaker. For the world, may this our glorious motto be on every breeze the truth unfurled shall scatter blessings rich and free. Blessed word of God, send forth thy light on every land and every sea. sit in tears to all who faint its strength imparts and gives with hope the eternal years blessed word of God send forth thy light on every land and every sea and every sea till all who Father in heaven, we thank thee for thy mercies to us, for the blessings of thy word and of life itself. Guide us, we pray, and send thy holy angels to lead us in life. In Jesus' name. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. Where sin cannot molest Near to the heart of God mm. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer Sent from the heart of God Hold us who bow before Thee Near to the heart of God. Blood. 
the day I accepted Jesus as Savior, as Lord, and as King. There was peace in my soul. Now life has a King's Heralds bring us now a favorite hymn, Angel Voices Sweetly Singing, of Heaven at Last. Angel Voices Sweetly Singing Echoes through the blue dome ringing News of wondrous gladness bring Heaven at last, heaven at last, heaven at last, oh, the joyful story of heaven at last, heaven at last, heaven at last, endless, boundless glory. Himself the living splendor, Christ the sunlight mild and tender, praises to the Lamb we render, art is heaven at last, heaven at last, heaven at last, oh the joyful story of heaven at last, heaven at last, heaven at last, endless boundless glory in heaven at last. Here now is H.M.S. Richards, the voice of prophecy speaker, his subject, What Jesus Said About Angels. In the hearts of millions of people today, there's no room been left for the holy angels of God. But those who believe the Bible must believe in the holy angels. The Bible itself is a book of angels. It says that the number of the angels is 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That's a hundred million. Read those words in Revelation 5.11. And in Hebrews 12.22 an innumerable company of angels. We just can't count them. According to Scripture, angels existed before death ever entered this world because, you remember, they were there at the gate of paradise with a sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Genesis 3.24 Since they lived before any man ever died, they are not the spirits of the dead. In Psalm 8, verse 5, we read, Thou hast made him, that is man, a little lower than the angels. So they're created beings. The angel Gabriel was sent to the little town of Nazareth to the Blessed Virgin Mary to announce the birth of Jesus. Luke 1, 28. Not only was his birth announced by an angel, but he was also named by an angel. Luke 2, 21. And when his birth actually occurred, 
It is announced by an angel to the frightened shepherds. Fear not, he said, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. After his baptism, Jesus was tempted by the devil when he fasted 40 days in the wilderness. Exhausted from this terrible conflict, he was strengthened by angels. We read in Matthew 4.11. There are at least 17 passages in the New Testament alone in which Jesus speaks of the angels and their ministry for men. Every true believer has a guardian angel, an angel appointed by God to watch over, to guide, to care for him from childhood to the grave. Just read Matthew 18.11. When King Herod cast the apostle Peter into prison, intending to bring him out to execution, an angel delivered him in the night although he was bound with two chains and between two guards. And when the apostle Peter came out of the prison and went down to the home of one of the believers where they were having a prayer meeting, a young girl named Rhoda came to listen at the door. and She knew Peter's voice. She was so happy that he was there that she ran in without opening the door and told the others, Peter's here. They wouldn't believe it. It was too good to be true. They said, it is his angel. That's Acts 12, 14. That shows the early Christians believed in guardian angels. The Jewish people of those days believed in the ministry of holy angels. For did they not have wonderful promises there in Psalm 91, 11? He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Yes, they believed in angels. And again, in Psalm 34, 7, we have the promise, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. That's been a blessed promise to our family. I can remember father and mother quoting that text to us in many a time of danger. We have the promise of angel help and care. In the Holy Scriptures, we read of angels as having spoken to one of the old patriarchs at the door of his tent. Genesis 18, 1. And to a distressed farmer as he threshed his wheat under an oak tree, fearing an armed raider would come and seize his grain. Sixth chapter of Judges. They appeared to persecuted apostles in prison. Acts 5, Acts 12. But we can't think of one instance of angels visiting a king on his throne or a noble in his palace or a rich man surrounded by splendor or a philosopher among his books. An angel once came to a prophet who was trusting in his own wisdom and trying hard to outwit the wisdom of God. In that case, the angel came with a drawn sword. And the apostate prophet was saved from death only by his donkey. Read the story in Numbers 22. An angel once came to a king on his throne, all right, but it was to smite him with worms so that he gave up the ghost. Acts, the 12th chapter. These records are all found in Holy Writ. Jesus said the angels are interested in man's salvation. Luke 15.10, I say unto you, there's more joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Jesus mentioned that. They're interested in us. And our confession of Christ before men is known to them also. For Jesus said, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Luke 12, 8. In this world of ours, men and women are born and die. They're married and given in marriage. But Jesus said, and I'm quoting Luke 20, verse 35, they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are children of God being the children of the resurrection. Marriage then is unknown among the angels and they never die. When God created man, he made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. But someday in relation to eternal life, those who are redeemed will be equal unto the angels. There's also a dark side to what Jesus said about the angels. Not only does he speak of the angels of God, those ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be the heirs of salvation, 
of which we read in Hebrews 1.14, but he speaks also of evil angels. Here in Matthew 25.41, he speaks of the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. It's quite clear from Scripture that approximately one-third of the heavenly host fell into sin and rebellion with Satan himself, a mighty angel, who was cast down to this earth, as we read in Revelation 12, 7. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. And he was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. These fallen angels are spoken of in the New Testament as demons. They opposed our Savior all through his earthly ministry. They recognized him and cried out, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Words in Luke 4.34. It is these fallen angels, the wandering banditti of the spirit world, as Carlisle B. Haynes calls them, who are the spirits of spiritism, impersonating our dead, teaching doctrines of demons, preparing for the final conflict of the day of God. Their destiny has been settled forever. As we read in Second Peter 2, 4, God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And this is stated in other words in Jude 6, the angels which kept not their first estate, he calls them here, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under the judgment of the great day. In the 13th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, our Savior tells us of the harvest of the world. And we have his explanation of the parable in the latter part of the chapter, where he says the good seed is sowed by the Son of Man. The field is the word, the good seed of the children of the kingdom. The tares, or weeds, are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So they have something to do, you see, with the final salvation of God's people at the end of time. They're not only spoken of as God's angels, but as his angels, that is, Christ's angels, because they work for him in his harvest. The harvest comes in connection with the second appearing of Christ in glory. Then shall appear the Son of Man, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew twenty four thirty. The angels of God, our unseen protectors and guides, the holy angels who have at times appeared in the guise of men and walked this earth, for the scripture says that some have entertained angels unawares. That's Hebrews 13, 2. All these angels of God will in that day be revealed in heavenly glory. As we read in Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. That's the day of glory, of power, the day of rejoicing. Then will be fulfilled in its completeness the promise made to the shepherds over the starlit hills of Judea, that there shall be glory in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Our Savior will come with a threefold glory, as he himself said in Luke 9.26, his own glory, his Father's, and of the holy angels. When the angel appeared to Daniel in vision, you will remember, he fell at his feet as dead. Neither is there breath left in me, he said. That's the tenth chapter of Daniel. Then the angel strengthened him. We think also of the angel that appeared at the garden tomb on the morning of Christ's resurrection. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Luke 28, 2. The glory and power of just one angel shook the earth, smote the soldier guard to the ground. What will it be when the heavens are filled with those radiant forms and the Savior comes with all the holy angels? 
As our Savior drew near the end of his earthly life and entered the Garden of Gethsemane, where he began his final contest with Satan, the weight of the world's sin began to bear down upon him until in his agony he sweat great drops of blood. When with strong crying and tears he prayed to his father, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. We are told that in that moment of supreme need, there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. This beautiful story is in Luke, the 22nd chapter. And on the third day after Christ's death, his resurrection was first announced by angel voices. For the holy women returned to the upper room and reported to the other disciples that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. Luke 24, 23. So we see that the birth, life, ministry, atoning sacrifice, resurrection, and second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ are all sustained by angel ministry, and that the redemption of this world involves things which the angels desire to look into, as we read in 1 Peter 1.12. Yes, Jesus said much about the angels, and we should seek to know more about their holy ministries. Hark, hark, my soul, angelic songs are swelling, O'er earth's green fields and ocean's wave-beat shore. How sweet the truth those blessed strains are telling Of that new life when sin shall be no more. Angels, sing on, your faithful watches keeping. Sing us sweet fragments of the songs above. Till morning's joy shall end the night of weeping and life's long shadows break in cloudless love. Angels of Jesus, angels of light, singing to welcome the pilgrims of the night. songs are swelling o'er earth's green fields and ocean's wave beat shore how sweet the truth those blessed strains are telling of that new life when sin shall be no more angels of Jesus Angels of light Singing to welcome The pilgrims of the night Angels sing on Your faithful watches keeping Sing a sweet fragments Of the songs above Till morning's joy shall end the night of weeping, and life's long shadows break in cloudless love. Angels of Jesus, angels of light, singing to of the night. Let's get acquainted. We make a host of new friends each month through our broadcast newspaper called The Voice of Prophecy News. In newspaper style, it tells thrilling accounts of the work of The Voice of Prophecy around the world. The news also contains the titles of the sermons and music of future broadcasts. We do appreciate your letters, and when you write... Please remember our purpose and pray for its fulfillment. The Voice of Prophecy is dedicated to preaching Christ by radio and teaching Christ through our free Bible correspondence courses. Write for the news today 
and learn more about this great missionary endeavor. This is Orville Iverson, Associate Minister of the Voice of Prophecy. It has been good to be with you today through the means of radio. God will help us to live each day for Christ. Now let us look to Him and go forward in faith. Have faith in God, whom all the angels praise. Have faith in God, they know our nights and days. Have faith in God, our guardians always. Have faith, dear friend, in God. We hope this transcribed program has served to bring spiritual strength today. Now we invite you to join us next week at this same time for another broadcast brought to you by the voice of prophecy. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.